Welcome to Unstoppable Faith with Dr. Kazumba Charles. This program is designed to inspire you to stand on the Word of God and to help you build unshakable and unstoppable faith in Jesus Christ. Here's your host, Dr. Kazumba. Welcome to Unstoppable Faith. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Kazumba Charles. Uh, thank you so very much for joining us. Uh, wherever you may be joining us around the world, it's always an honor and a privilege to bring you men and women of God who share on this program powerful insights and powerful word of God to build you up so that you are unshakable in your pursuit and in your relationship and fellowship with God. On today's program, I have a very great uh, man of God, uh, Dr. Weman, is going to be joining me shortly here. He's a speaker and author and presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Church of God. Uh, represented in uh, nearly 70 nations around the globe. Uh, Dr. Weman has served on the faculty of uh, Messenger College as lead pastor of uh, Joplin Family Worship Center uh, in Missouri, and uh, he's uh, the founder and president of uh, Exceed International. I am so excited. We're going to be talking about uh, Nearer to God, Closing the Distance Between You and Your Creator. He's just released uh, a very powerful book. You can see it right behind me here. And we're going to be telling you how you can get a copy of that book. But in the meantime, let me welcome Dr. Weman. Dr. Weman, welcome on Unstoppable Face Up. Thank you, Dr. Kazumba. Wonderful to be with you today. Excited to be here on your pro program and on this uh, interview. I'm the one who is so excited because, uh, you know, you have uh, a vast uh, 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 wisdom and uh, knowledge and experience uh, uh, in ministry uh, as you serve, you know, churches and the body of Christ around the nation. So it's an honor for me to have you here and uh, our viewers uh, around the world joining us. So I'm going to go quickly to the first question I have for you as we look at this topic, uh, nearer to God, uh, closing the distance between uh, you and your creator. Uh, my first question is, uh, as believers, we should desire to be nearer to God every day. So why is right now the best time for people to have uh, the, your latest release of the book? Well, thank you for having me on again, and thank you for the question. You know, we're living in some challenging times with the COVID chaos and the pandemic and it's really during these types of difficult times that uh, we're able to draw closer to Christ, that we're able to draw near to him. And I think one of the, the greatest challenges that we're facing today is not social distancing, but spiritual distancing and learning how to draw closer to God in the midst of, of the crisis and the chaos. So. I think it's a, an incredible moment in history. I think Christ is beckoning or attracting uh, us toward himself. And if we'll heed that uh, overture from Christ, I think this is an amazing time to draw near to him. Amen. Um, you refer to these uh, historic moments of uh, disaster in the Bible as uh, wake-up calls. Uh, would you say that COVID-19 uh, COVID pandemic has been a wake-up call um, for the modern Christian? If so, how, uh, uh, um, uh, how so is that, is that? Yeah, I think God uh, allows circumstances to happen, Dr. Kazumba, that, that really interrupts our schedules. Uh, I like to call them div divine interruptions where... God will show up in the midst of uh, troublesome times and, and again, uh, call us to himself. And if, if you would have told me that uh, we would be living in a world where we've seen 5 million deaths to, to the pandemic um, across the board, I, I would have thought, you know, you were out of your mind or that you'd have to wear a mask to uh, enter into a subway a restaurant and get a subway sandwich in some particular states or that some nations actually mandate that you wear a mask um, outside and, and can't even take a, a drink of something without um, 
you know, keeping your mask on, you have to keep that mask on even outside. So uh, I think God's using this time as a moment to, to attract us. We see that in scripture. We see uh, when Adam and Eve were hiding, how God interrupted their schedule. We see how God interrupted Abraham when he was getting ready to offer his son Isaac uh, on a sacri- in a sy- sacrifice. We see how God uh, interrupted Moses with a burning bush. And, you know, so God uses divine interruptions. And the greatest divine interruption of all is when Jesus the Christ as Emmanuel uh, came, and especially during the, the Christmas season and, and the incarnation of Christ, we recognize what a miracle it was for God to interrupt the schedule of humankind and send his son to be Emmanuel, God with us. And so it's in the midst of circumstances that God loves to create an alarm clock moment, if you will, to wake us up to his overtures, to draw closer to him, to create an atmosphere that will say, I want to know you more intimately. Uh, and, and maybe you're so busy, you've created such a, a busy schedule that, that there needs to be a moment here that I interrupt that schedule to draw closer to you. Now, Dr. Wiman, you know, right now, uh, with the pandemic and everything going on, uh, many people have been questioning, uh, did God allow this? Is, is God is still in control? So with that thought there, I want to ask you the question I have here. What evidence do we have that God is still in control in the midst of uh, tragedies? And uh, what can we say to someone who says that God caused uh, this pandemic or a tragedy that they may be going through in their life? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think God gets blamed for a lot of things that that are uh, human-induced or are natural disasters, things that come along in, in the world. And he tends to get blamed for everything when in all reality, he's the one there that wants to walk with us through the midst of of the struggle. I I like to use the illustration of my little grandson, who's about 18 months old. If he's walking beside me and he happens to trip and fall down, um, is it my fault that he he tripped and fell down? uh, Or it's my role to just reach down and and pick him up and and hug him and embrace him and love him and let him know that everything is going to be okay. Now, I'm not saying that that God doesn't introduce uh, situations in our lives that that create that overture to come to him. But I also know that there are things that happen that are human induced, things that happen because of our own decisions and choices. And he's not there to to condemn us. He's there to pick us up and embrace us and, and love us. Let, let me give you an example of, of Mark chapter six, if I may, with, with Jesus walking on the water to the disciples. You remember the disciples are rowing in the midst of a headwind and they're struggling. Jesus comes walking on the water to them and they cry out, uh, and believe that he's a ghost. They don't even recognize who he is at that moment. Isn't it interesting that that the ones who should have known or have been able to identify who Christ is at that particular moment in Mark chapter six didn't recognize him. So they cried out, not even in, in faith, they cried out in fear and they thought he was a ghost. And the Bible says Jesus would have passed them by and, I, and I've always struggled with that, uh, Dr. Kazumba, yes. because, you know, I, I want to throw up my hands and say, well, why would Jesus have passed by at that moment until we recognize his nature, mm-hmm. that he was coming from the side they left mm-hmm. and he was moving toward the side they were going to mm-hmm. in all reality. And, and it's my belief that Jesus was getting ready to pass by and lead them to the other side, because that's his nature. When we needed a savior, he descended from heaven to earth. And the Bible says in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them who were under the law. When we needed a healer, 
He was wounded for our transgressions. Yes. He was bruised for our iniquities. The mm -hmm. chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. When we needed a deliverer, he descended into the lower parts of the earth and took the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Mm -hmm. When we needed a provider, he ascended back into heaven and is even now preparing a place for us that where he is, we may be also. And by the way, when we need a soon and coming king, mm -hmm. he's going to descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel Amen. and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Yes. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds Amen. to meet the Lord of the air. So he always leads the way mm -hmm. for us. And so he, he would have passed by, but something stopped him. Mm -hmm. When the disciples cried out in fear, doctor, he changed his plans yes. and he stepped into the boat yeah. with the disciples mm -hmm. and immediately there was a great calm. I love that about Jesus Wow! because he changes his plans. He's moved by the feeling of our infirmities. Yes. And when he hears our cry and sometimes not even a cry of, of faith, Mm -hmm. But a cry of fear, mm -hmm. he will change his plans and he will step into the boat, draw near to us, mm -hmm. and the storm that we're in will calm. That's how great our God is and how he loves to respond in the midst of circumstances like these today. Powerful stuff. Powerful. I'm just enjoying here as you're sharing. Uh, uh, that is a very encouraging uh, insight right there. Uh, Dr. Weman, I'm going to go to these questions. Uh, 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 as we see tragic and uh, devastating events uh, unfold on local news, um, local or national news, we also can catch a glimpse of local and global church fighting evil. How is the church operating to combat the darkness in today's world? And how can we join that fight? I believe it's imperative that, that we shine brightly, that we're full salt shakers, if you will. Uh, you know, the world today is, is discouraged. Uh, they're seeing uh, angry faces on television. They're, they're seeing uh, frustration and disappointment and discouragement. They're hearing and seeing mandates that are forcing them to live their lives certain ways. And I, I think this is a moment in time where Christ's followers can really shine brightly and not do it with uh, anger or frustration, but do it with love and compassion. And uh, we have a, a genuine opportunity, uh, Dr. Kazumba, to to show the world a different picture of who Christ is, uh, not a, a picture of, of anger and judgment and condemnation, but a picture of his love and his compassion and his greatness. You remember Moses when he actually said to God the Father, to uh, Hashem, he said, show me your glory. Mm -hmm. and, and what did God show him? He showed Moses his goodness. And I, I would like to just say to those who are watching today that we have an opportunity to show the glory of God. And the glory of God is his goodness. That's what he's known for. That's what he's he's great for. He's he's famous for being good. Mm -hmm. He's famous for being compassionate and loving. Mm -hmm. And and the genuine Christ followers of the church today who really impact our world who defeat darkness, who defeat the, the onslaught of the enemy will be those who arise and declare the greatness and the goodness of God in the midst of darkness and despair. Uh, Doc, I want to go to this uh, question. I couldn't wait to ask you this question here. What is uh, gaptivity? Thank you. I, I made up a word in the book and you, you caught it for sure. Gaptivity <laughs> is, is the word uh, where we just simply use gap and activity. And we put it together and we call it gaptivity. And it really presents the idea that in our lives, sometimes we have uh, gaps with God because of all of the activities in our lives. We allow the tyranny of the urgent 
to distract us from spending more time with God. And our busy schedules can cause us to become uh, distracted in drawing near to God. In fact, there's a whole section in the book, uh, Dr. Kazumba, that really talks about the practical nature of overcoming uh, the warp speed of our lives. The warp speed of our lives can warp our soul uh, if we're not careful. We, we have to take time to uh, set up appointments with God, spend time with God, pray without ceasing, and overcome the gaps or the activities or the captivity in our lives that, that create a distance uh, with God rather than closeness with Him. That brings me to this question, and I'm going to use captivity in there too. Uh, what should you say to people uh, who feel isolated or captivity from others? And uh, what about uh, from God? Right. Well, you know, because of the COVID chaos and the mask and the isolation, our, our culture uh, is really challenged with uh, separation right now. And uh, often people are even keeping you at a distance. You know, I, I do a lot of traveling and, of course, fly uh, across the country and around the world. And it's very difficult to connect with people because they're very isolated. They're wearing their mask. And yeah. the masks are not just physical, if I may say that. They're yeah. metaphorical. You know, they're able to hide behind their mask of of isolation or disappointment or discouragement or a lack of family reconciliation or whatever they're struggling with. And and so we have to be very intentional and pur purposeful as the body of Christ to engage people, to to draw them into community, a uh, community of faith. Uh, I know even with uh, a lot of online services that are happening now, at least here in the United States of America, we're not uh, seeing yet the, the mass return of Christ's followers mm -hmm. into the sanctuaries and auditoriums of our, uh, of our churches. In fact, I read a statistic the other day that said only 57% of Christians in America yeah. have returned uh, at this point versus pre-COVID or wow. pre-pandemic uh, church life. Wow. And so there's a lot of even Christians today who are struggling with returning and connecting personally in community, rubbing shoulders again, mm -hmm. which is critical because no matter what happens in our culture, the Bible says that Christianity is relationship, yes. loving the Lord our God with our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving our neighbor as ourselves. And so relational connection must overcome isolation uh, and separation to build relationship with God and one another. Mm. Wow. Wow. And uh, how do we encourage those who have lost hope or struggle uh, with faith uh, because of uh, their suffering? Yeah, I, I was on a, another a radio program just the other day, and, and the host asked me the question, what, what do you say to someone or what do you say to people who just want to begin to close the distance? What is the first step mm -hmm. that uh, people should take in trying to get closer to God? And, and I, I want to say the same thing here on your show that I, I did on that interview, and that is just cry out to God. Amen. That, that's what the disciples did in the boat. And again, it wasn't even a cry of, of faith. It was a cry of fear. Uh, and so I, I'm just telling people, cry out to God, whether you're afraid uh, whether you're doubting that God will show up in your circumstance, uh, whether you're struggling with grief from the loss of a loved one, uh, whether you're struggling financially and with your job in the marketplace, just cry out to God and he will change his plans. Isn't it interesting that, that so many Christians in the midst of a storm, Dr., Yes. struggle with the identity and sovereignty of Christ. Yes. 
Yes. They, they're not able to see him as he is. I mean, just two chapters earlier in Mark 4, Jesus had stilled the storm. He stood up in the boat with the disciples and he said, peace be still. And now two chapters later, the disciples can't even recognize him. Wow. There's so many Christ followers today that are struggling with the sovereignty of Christ in the midst of the storm. And I would declare to them today, just cry out to Christ and watch him get into your boat and calm the storm that you're in. Cry out to God and watch God calm that storm. You know, Dr. Weman, I always say this, you haven't believed God until you are able to believe God in the storm. Because yes. it's in the storm that where we begin to see, do I have a relationship with him? Yes, sir. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. In fact, I love to say that a faith that cannot be tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Wow. <laughs> that is even powerful. A faith that, that cannot be tested is a faith that, that cannot be trusted. That is so powerful. And it brings me to this. I want you to take uh, a few moments here to talk about um, uh, uh, the glory of God. What does glory mean in terms of uh, giving God the glory or glorifying his name? And uh, how does that glory bring us closer to him? Right. And uh, I, I want to elaborate on that just a little bit more, because as I mentioned a few minutes ago, when Moses, you know, declared to God, show me your glory, God revealed his goodness. Mm -hmm. And you look at, uh, you know, you look at athletes today or you look at entertainers, um, you know, what are they famous for? You know, LeBron James uh, is famous for basketball. Tiger Woods is, is famous for uh, golf. And you see uh, different singers who are famous for uh, their ability to, to sing. Uh, but when you look at God, doctor, what is God famous for? He's famous for being good. Yes. He's, yes. he's a good God, yes. even on a bad day. Oh, yes. He's, he's famous for being good. Yes. And so when we begin to display the glory of God through our lives to the world, mm -hmm. we are displaying the goodness of God, how mm -hmm. good God is in the midst of the storm, as you said, yes. how good God is even on a bad day. We are displaying the goodness mm -hmm. of God, and that's what he's famous for. Wow. God is famous for his goodness. I just love that. I can even feel chills just talking about that. His Hallelujah. Goodness, his mercy, his kindness. Dr. Weman, I want to go to these uh, couple of questions I have uh, before we wrap up. I see our time is running out. I want, I want you to pray for our viewers, but I want to go to this question real quick. In your book, you talk about uh, how our lives can go to such a dizzling speeds that we sometimes leave God behind. Can you share what that looks like and how we can, uh, you know, um, maybe make some adjustment in, our, in ourselves to try and walk with God according to his word? Yeah, I, I really believe it begins with desire and a, and a passion to uh, want to spend time with, with God. I, I always encourage Christians to make an appointment with God. I, I think the morning is a, a great opportunity to make an appointment with God, to spend time with God, to invite him into your day. Um, you know, you want God to be a part of, of every decision, uh, of every situation you face in the day. That's why I prefer to spend time with him in the morning and not necessarily at the end of the day, although um, obviously there are opportunities to do that as well. But when you have a desire to spend time with God, you will put him on your calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a desire to get a certain food item or a certain drink, I, I love to go to Starbucks and get a certain coffee, an iced caramel macchiato upside down with light caramel drizzle. Well, because I like that drink, I will put Starbucks on my schedule and I will make an appointment to go there and get that drink. 
Well, when you desire to spend time with God, you will make appointments. You will set times in your daily schedule to spend time with God so you can taste and see that he is good. And uh, just before you pray here, um, uh, man of God, uh, Dr. Women, I just want you to uh, advise our viewers or share with our viewers where they can get a copy of uh, this latest book, uh, uh, Nearer to God, Closing the Distance Between uh, Us and Our Creator. Where can they go to get the copy? Well, they can get it at bakerpublishinghouse.com, bakerpublishinghouse.com. They can get it on Amazon. Uh, it's also in, a, in an audio version. They can go to uh, audiobooks.com. They can get it on Nook uh, and get the digital version as well. So there's lots of places to, to get it. So I would encourage them to check out any of those places. Uh, they can also get it at uh, our denominational uh, International Mission Center, which is pcg.org pcg.org. So lots of places to get it, doctor. And you can, they can, the, our viewers can see the details on the screen right there. Right before you pray, man of God, I've got this question. I always ask all our, our, our you know, um, our guests that graciously give us their time to share on Unstoppable Faith. This question, what makes your faith unstoppable? I, I believe that uh, faith is unstoppable when you add thanksgiving to it. You remember oh. Colossians chapter 2 when uh, Paul said, being rooted and built up in the faith. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on to talk about how that that faith abounds with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Faith becomes unstoppable when you when you add thanksgiving to it, it sets faith in overdrive. It creates an abundant, a, a, a flowing, a living faith. And so when you have thanksgiving in God, when you can praise him for the breath you have in your lungs and you can praise him that your heart's beating in your chest and you can praise him that you have a sound mind and you can, you can praise him because the sun is rising and setting and you can praise him for the food on your table and the water in your glass. When you can praise him, your, your faith goes into overdrive and it's unstoppable. Amen. Amen. I just want you to take some time, sir, and uh, just look into that camera and uh, pray for somebody uh, who's watching this program. They feel stressed. They feel isolated. They feel there is a gap between them and God, and they're not even sure the presence of God is right there with them, or they're not sure that God is good, as you said. I just want to declare this right now to those who are watching in Jesus' name that God is near, that God is not remote, that he is not distancing himself from you, that he is near you. If you will cry out uh, to God and say, God, I need you in my life. God, I need you during this, this crisis situation. He will change his plans, whatever he's doing, and he will get into your boat and calm your storm. The Bible says that he draws near to those who have a broken and a contrite heart or a broken and a contrite spirit. So I want you to know today that, that God is near and not remote. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray for those who are listening today. I pray that a desire will arise within them now. Faith will arise in their hearts to reach out to you beyond where they are currently. That they will hunger and thirst for more of you. And that as they hunger and thirst for you, the goodness of God, your goodness, will be made known to them in very plausible and tangible ways that will reconcile relationships, that will bring healing to their bodies and to their families, and that will bring spiritual renewal to their lives and to their churches. We pray these things in faith believing and faith receiving in the name of Jesus Christ that's exceedingly abundantly above every name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen, uh, Dr. Weman. Thank you so very much, sir, for joining us on Unstoppable Faith. Thank you, Dr. Kazumba, for having me. Greatly appreciated.
and we hope we'll have you once again on this program someday. Would love to do it. And to our viewers, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord watch over you. Until then, shalom, shalom. Faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. Thank you for tuning in to Unstoppable Faith with Dr. Kazumba Charles. If this program has been a blessing to you, write to us at life at and share your testimony.